Hello, everyone. Previously Team on Team Man 978. Go it's a DD's discount, which, look at that. They discounted on the DD sign. Uh, let's see what they got. Team Man 978. Chill review. Hello everyone, T-Man 978 right now. We're going to be taking a look at Official Transformers Masterpiece MP53 Plus B, Dia Burnout, who is a Cybertron munitions expert, which means Autobot. Dia Burnout, she joins the boxy female trend that's going on that everybody wants so much because they don't want everybody to fit inside of a certain type of category when it comes to body shape. All right, here's everything that comes in the packaging. We get the instruction fold out, the collector's cart, which has this artwork on there, and some stats and Japanese bio on the back. We get a sticker sheet that has an Autobot logo, a G2 Autobot logo, and a smaller one for the bike right here. That Used to come inside of the vehicle right here that this becomes a Honda City. You get three blasters. You get this Dia Cinder holographic figure right there. And of course, Dia Burnout or just straight up Burnout, whatever one you want to call it. And we're going to start things off with a little moped. It has details in there like a kickstand. This kickstand is permanent, so it will just sit there and sit up. The wheels do not roll. That is very, very boring. And I believe this is one to one. What does that say? Medicamp or whatever. This lifts up. Come on. This lifts up. There we go. It can lift up and then rotate off to the side. And the handles are actually inside of there. We can pull at that. If you have a spudger, I suggest using that. But anyway, get these handles up. We can rotate. Make sure this stays up. Good night. This thing is tiny, as you can see. Now we can take this figure, which is basically an unpainted Carly. Now in the... Takara Manga for Dia Burnout. She is in a, an, an exosuit because most Diaclone pilots are in exosuits and she's a black female. But they're using Carly and she's unpainted so you can just pretend maybe she has a straight straightened hair or whatever. But this thing, the arms suck. If you bend it out more than that, or try to rotate them up they will just fall right off I heated them took them off heated them up squeezed the little port where the ball joint goes in and squeeze it on top but that didn't really fix it the head is on the ball joint and it can rotate the abdomen or torso there goes one of the arms is on a ball joint <laughs> And it can do that. It should rotate. Yeah, it does rotate a little bit, but it fights you. The legs are significantly better. They can kick up more than 90. The knees bend more than 90, and that's it. I mean, they can go outward a little bit, but I wouldn't suggest it. But basically, we need to get her into some type of seated situation. I'm going to do that off camera because this thing... Here it is on air. I'm not going to murder myself trying to get the arms on there. One of the arms fell off. Trash. Absolute trash. Here is Burnout. Burnout has some paint detail with like the markings for that. Yeah, it's called a City Turbo. There is no ref Yeah, no, there's silver paint. I was going to say there wasn't, but there is silver paint there. You get this detail in the front. It does say turbo here again, I believe. And you get detail on the back. So the outer shell, everything that's part of the car is painted. It has this feature right here where you can open this up and actually see authentic motor detail right there. Cause somebody thought that was important. 
I guess that's what make this a masterpiece. And you can open this rear hatch right here. You can do one of two things with this. You can take this guy, what you open this up and fold the handlebars back in and shove them in. I'm gonna do that off camera. You saw the str struggle I went through. And now like in real life, this can store inside of there and you shut it. Yay, yay. If it attaches in there some type of way, I don't know. The instructions do make it look like it's supposed to port onto that peg thing back there, but I don't think that can happen. If you like seeing me struggle, here's some more. This gun right here, that actually has the handle that can go back and this barrel that can go back. There is a little tiny peg right there. And I don't know if you can see it, but there is a tiny peg hole right there. You're supposed to port that peg onto the peg hole. And there we go with that gun in there that you can't see because it's so black. Now we take this double barrel gun and it has this peg that can rest on the front of the gun that's in there already on that side. So it gets in there kind of securely. But now here's where things get crazy. They <laughs> show you that this gun right here with this removable thing is supposed to go up in there like this. It doesn't peg, I don't believe. And then this gun can sit in there. This was the best I could get it. I just cut out two minutes worth of footage. Last things to show off is it does roll. And if we bend it this way, you can detach these pegs that's in there, and which is nuts. They want you to use this as a feature, like a real door, but then they peg it together in such a way that makes it not functional as a door, but you saw me just unpeg it. But basically, if you put her into a seated position like this, we can get her actually sitting in there. Isn't that nice? And we can bend this back and shut it again. Of course, when you bend it back, it makes it come off, come loose. It's so dark and there's so many robot pieces in there. You're not going to be able to see her in there. But it does roll good and that's great. All right, here's this comparison between Reboost and Skids right here. So there's that. The line pattern on the side mostly resembles Skids, even though it's like slightly different. Let's show it up close. There's more stuff going on right there. But yeah, it's mostly resembling Skids because it's the same exact model. While well, Reboost is like has a smoother front and whatnot. And less details as far as the stripes on the side. But anywho, car is nice. Basically, you don't have to use any of those extra features that it has. And it's just a nice looking painted car. Uh, I, I already did the transformation of these two in their chill comparison review. So I'm not going to do a transformation in this video we're gonna go straight to the robot mode I plan on doing a separate video where I transform them one of them I haven't decided on who to robot mode and back to vehicle mode so stay tuned for that if you actually need that all right here's burnout or dia burnout in robot mode with all the accessories right there lined up so you get to see how tall she would be next to a human and truth really be told, since I think anything like this is underscaled, here she is next to Big Spike that came with Masterpiece Hound. I think that will be a more normal or the more realistic height 
that a human should be next to a transformer of this scale. All right, now I'm gonna show burnout up close and then I'll show the accessories and whatnot. But here is the face. Not really masculine or feminine to me. Well, I guess it would be more of the traditional Transformers male, to be honest. The face doesn't scream female to me besides it being a little slender and whatnot. And I guess they went with a body like this to be a female because it has, it's one of the figures that has a chest that sticks out and has a small waistline. That's about the only thing that I can think of why they decided to make this mold into a female. But it is paint. Most of the outer shell of the vehicle mode is painted. Anything that's not really the outer shell of the vehicle mode, like this part that was hidden inside of the vehicle, it's just straight up plastic. But the legs are painted. And... I believe all of this is just red plastic. So it's not a tremendous amount of paint. It would have been nice if the feet were painted. That would have really gave me a G1 feel. But mostly it just looks like skids and reboost. Both of the accessories and the figure feel like regular generations quality plastic. So there's that. And she has four different weapons she has like every single weapon that reboots and skid has skids has so you can put it on top of the forearm or on the side and in one instance i think you can have both guns at the same time most of these guns clip on the same way basically like there's a little peg right here and there's a peg on the side and a peg right there. The peg in the front. I noticed that they don't really sit on top of the arm that well. So I typically don't even try to put the guns on top of the arm. This particular one has a removable piece right here. And I believe you can put blast effects in there if I'm not mistaken. It appears that I am mistaken because off camera I didn't. I wasn't able to find anything that I could fit in there. But you get the double barrel thing right here. You get this gun right here that actually has a handle. Now this one is good for putting over the hand like this because it actually has that handle. So that's good. And you get this one that is highly similar to this one. And they're all made out of unpainted black plastic but like i said they sit on the side of the arm way better than they do on the top this particular one i can get siege effects on right there because it has the same size port now i think there is a combination where i can put more than one gun in one hand it's these two right here the one with the double barrel and this one there's nothing hanging over the sides like this has a grip that hangs over the side and this one has a grip that hang over, hangs over the side. So these two you can get together, but the other ones you can't. Bad news with this figure. <sighs> it feels to me cheaper than Reboost and Skids. It has a few issues. Let's get into the articulation. The head is on a ball joint right there. You can get a tiny bit of side to side and rotate. The neck is a separate joint, so it can look up, but it looks kind of weird while it's looking up. So basically, unless you grab it a certain way, let's see. It can bend on a ball joint so it doesn't look too crazy. The arm rotates right here, goes out to the side. This transformation hinge goes up and down and it has a bicep swivel. The elbow bends up way more than 90 degrees, which is great. The transformation hinge lets that happen, and it rotates all the fingers open, hook style, and the index finger is separate for whatever reason. I think that's something that goes back to the Transformers alternators days. It has no ab crunch, but the hips 
go for it like that all in one piece now one thing one part of the transformation that doesn't work right the legs are supposed to expand but this one right here it does not lock into place and I've done everything shy of breaking it you can bend the knee more than 90 degrees and unfortunately when you bend it back it's so tight this this happens every single time so you have to grab it there to bring the legs straight she has ankle pivot the foot if you expand it can rock forward and can rock back a tiny bit so there's that that's good but this right here this doesn't stay tight and this opening up the that's my main issue it does it on both sides it doesn't lock in a place at freaking all and the plastic feels very flimsy like I'm trying to hold it so I can do this but when the other joints are tight and you got flimsy other pieces it, it never wants to work right with you and that's something I'm always gonna complain about so this too tight up in there making this open is no lack lack locking point this right here on this particular figure not on my skids and not on my reboots doesn't want to lock well this leg the hip part doesn't want to lock right here and this right here this unlatches because this joint is tight it unlatches the transformation right there which is frustrating I'm not sure if every single copy of this is like that but it's bad that my copy of it is like that and I don't like it of course you can move the wings back and forth like that if you want here she is next to skids and reboost I feel like she has less paint than either one of these their weapons are painted I mean they did give her an extra gun but um yeah but she has the chest balls right there or the engine block that skids has this one has that flat completely flat chest the legs aren't retooled or anything you would hope with them trying to differentiate her they would do more than just pop a new head on there but that's all they did it would have been nice if they would have given her new arms and new legs something to make it a tiny bit different or to be more feminine per se I can't really say because it's a robot that it's not a female robot but you know what I mean here she is with two other female Autobot Masterpiece cars. And like I was saying about how they could have changed the molds with Road Rage right here, they definitely gave her more cylindrical legs than Trax had. And the chest part right here is way more smooth and, and kind of separated almost in a way to insinuate cleavage. And the face is definitely more feminine. But I have a review for her if you want to see her up close. And RC, what can you say? <laughs> She's as girly as you can get. Now, these two seem to be made with the same thought process in mind, where they were giving us updated G1 cars that are closer to what they would look like in a cartoon, but it's way more detailed than what we got in a cartoon. And it's very, very simple. Whereas RC she does not feel as hollow she almost feels like she has die cast in her body compared to these two these two are way like lighter and less complex as far as the transformation the last comparison i'm going to do is next to a voyager class figure and i'll get to my final thoughts really right now this thing right here now because it's an import toy they have to slap on some extra price as far as the import but it is a very simple toy i was lucky enough to get this thing for 40 dollars, and with because it was only 40 i'm not that disappointed but if i would have paid the full 80 i'd have been kind of disappointed so definitely i feel like if you're gonna get dire burnout definitely get it for a cheaper price than its retail which i believe is 79.99 because for me, I just feel like it's a Voyager class figure with more paint than normal than a Voyager class would have. And it's a licensed vehicle. 
and they went out of their way to give it all of the real life vehicle stylings and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's very, very simple and it has issues on it that I don't expect with a masterpiece figure. So, yeah, that that's my final thoughts on that. And you'll tell me what you think about it. Tell me, did you did you buy her and did you have any of the issues that I have? Or is yours perfect? Did my video actually interest you in getting her regardless of my issues or any of my thoughts? Anyhow, thank you for watching. Until next time, T-Man978, out of here. Figure action. That one's me. Join the Syndicate Toy Hunters Facebook group. Link in the description. Click, click the videos. Click the f***ing videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You should really click these videos. Click, click the videos. Click those f***ing videos, baby. Click, click the videos. You really should click those videos. Click the channel.